Welcome to At The Ready Podcast, where we gear up men to navigate life's battles with purpose. Join us as we arm ourselves with wisdom, faith, and a community of men prepared to walk this life together. Now let's get ready. In this episode of At The Ready, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Keith Wallace. Keith was a stud athlete as a kid. Basketball, football, rode motocross. He excelled at everything he did, physically. And then he started to experiment with alcohol. And before he knew it, it took over his life. And then he ended up in the lowest of lows even contemplated taking his life. But then he he turned his life around. After time and error and a lot of consequences. But that's Keith's story to tell. And we talk about that today. A lot of good conversation today with Keith. He's a good friend of mine. He's a good man. He's a good example of what not to do and then how to fix it if you go down that road. So pull up a chair, put in an earbud, Sit down, listen up, as we talk to my good friend, Keith. Now let's get ready. All right, welcome, Keith. Welcome to At The Ready Podcast. It's good to have you. Thank you. Uh, Me and you go way back. We've known each other since kindergarten, I think. Yeah. Um, So I just wanted to give you an opportunity to tell your story. We both went to the same elementary school. I had to admit, I'm a little bit jealous because you were the stud athlete <laughs> growing up and I was yeah. the nerdy kid who wasn't good at anything. Yeah, yeah, that I was. I played quarterback, you know, point guard, the whole nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, just everything kind of come natural to me. I mean, obviously, I have an older brother <clears throat> and a cousin that was older than me always, you know, kind of, I guess, vamp my ability to play up just by – having like stronger competition that i grew up with every day i think that that's a big that comes into a big play because i'm the oldest right by a big number and so and i blossomed late you know i didn't become uh a man until or or athletic even until i was probably in my early 20s but having that older sibling makes a big difference huge huge Huge. difference because i was the oldest so i didn't have nobody to compete against and my brother was a pretty good athlete yeah I'll just take credit for his athleticism. <laughs> oh, you got to. I guess maybe that's what mine done. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, just tell us a little bit about your story. Wherever you want to take off. We, like we said, we know you that yep. you played sports in school. What about? I know a, a, around about middle school. Let's just take off right about there. Okay. Because I remember in middle school, uh, you were playing quarterback. We had a good. We had a good Solid. football team. We went undefeated, right? Eighth yep. grade and maybe Seventh, even freshman. Eight freshman year. Yeah. And then what happened? I uh, got a new coach. Got a new coach. Got a new coach, and I was racing motocross, and, you know, it's what I wanted to do. That was my passion at the time. Yeah. And he come up to me, and I was actually talking to your stepdad. I'll never forget it at the commons area, and we were up by the up by the front desk, and he introduced himself to me, you know, and he's like, I heard you race motocross. I was like, yes, sir, I sure do. He's like, well, you won't be quarterback for me. And I was like, well, good luck to you. <laughs> I turned back around and never spoke to him again. Started talking to Kelly. and Wow. That's, that was the end of my football career, and I regret it every day. Yeah, but not even a – I mean, that was kind of a dumb move on yeah. his part. Not yeah. even a – I mean, we had beat Mayfield, which, you know, state champions. Like, yeah. Only team ever probably in Graves County in a long time – well, not ever, but in a long time that it actually beat them. And, yeah. And, done it pretty easily our class had a had a bunch of athletes that were really good and then for just varying reasons over the years as we entered into high school quit playing sports yep like i said my my freshman year at the end of it was my last year yeah just walked away of course my mom she was furious I bet. she was bad yeah and like i said today i'm still i'm still mad at myself for quitting because i think i would have had a lot of opportunities probably went on somewhere with it but yeah Ended up choosing the road that I chose, and it wasn't a very good one. Yeah. So, so uh, before we get there, you did motocross for a while. I did. And uh, for those that don't know, like, we went to a lot of motocross races together, not because I rode motocross, <laughs> but uh, my stepdad did. Right. And uh, then you and your brother did. I, I know your dad did way back in the day, my but cousin. I don't remember him riding whenever we were going. There. Had two other cousins that raced. Yeah. 
that you know one of them went all over but mm-hmm. yeah we done it from the time i was 11 till i was 19 years old and got a job couldn't ride because i had a probationary period yeah. come home one day and dad sold everything we had yeah so and that, you were good at that too i was i, I was. remember you yeah. being as far as in this region you know, going to Loretta Lens and riding, yeah. and you were one of the best ones in this on, region for on sure. On posters and gas stations, yeah. doing freestyle. Like, yeah, I had pretty much no fear, and yeah. I loved it. But all right, you bring up the no fear. I remember that about you more than anything yeah. because I had a dirt bike too. When probably when we were we were riding like eighties and one twenty fives. Yeah. You know, at, around that time, I had a dirt bike, and you had a little bit a little course out there. At, at, and we came to your house one time and rode, and you're just like. Bleh! Oh, yeah, wide just, open. And yeah. I was like, uh, <laughs> you know, I um, was scared. I, I remember know. the first time that I ever got on one, and, and I was actually scared of it, and my mom came out, and she's like, I can ride a dirt bike. We was like, nah, whatever, you know. She gets on and takes off, and I was like, after that, I was like, no way. My mom's <laughs> no on this bike. No I'm getting on it going. Yeah, there. so, yeah, but no, we did. We went all over. Uh, you know, it was, it was a very good bonding time with my dad and my brother. And, yeah. of course, we were all close. If You know, you've seen one of us, you've seen us all. So, yeah. do I do miss that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, but, you know, with the the Wallace boys, that y'all, yeah. y'all had that uh, – this is what this was back before enclosed trailers were cool. But yeah. you had – remember we had those trailers with the, yeah, the three, the three little individual. ramps and y'all, y'all had your three bikes pulled everywhere. It was actually built for Harleys. Oh, was it? Yes, it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And we just kind of incorporated it over. Dad had took it to work and painted it when he was working at Ingersoll. Yeah. So yeah, we just kind of kind of made it our own little style there. Yeah. But so now you live uh after about high school is kind of when we we kind of separated yeah. as far as you know, even up to high school, I wouldn't say we were super tight friends, yeah. but we, we knew each other and and seen each other, hung out with a lot of the same people. But then after high school, I went to the military. Yep. And then tell us a little bit about what happened to you after. Well, I actually, uh, I went to work at Paducah and Louisville Railway. Okay. And hated it. Yeah. Was dating a girl. Actually, the reason you didn't see me much was because of her, because I was going to Carlisle County and didn't hang out with anybody from my school. Right. Which, you know, we went to Graves. Yeah. And uh, just, I worked, co-opted, and got off work, went to, went to a mental roofing company and worked there in high school you know i was just like filling trucks up loading trucks and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i uh, ended up getting on at p l when i was dating her her stepdad was one of the big wigs there gotcha ended up working there for four years and i ended up getting in trouble and ended up losing my job now that's a pretty good so, job yeah uh, yeah it well, definitely was good well-paying job yeah yeah for around here i guess if you want to say yeah it was mm-hmm. it was actually went from having almost everything you could possibly think of to rock bottom yeah so uh ended up diving deep off into alcohol like big time of course it started while i was working there because i was riding home with a guy who drank uh, and we would stop every day and it went from 18 pack to a 30 pack and this was a day wow and if i didn't finish it i tried yeah and uh <clears throat> i just went went off from there just getting in trouble after trouble after trouble and i ended up losing that job because of because of my addiction did so, you did you drink like before that no not at all no I didn't party in high school. I didn't smoke. I didn't dip. I didn't do anything. I didn't grow up around it. I was you know, going to say, your mom or dad, it. nobody did. One of them. I, had, I had a granddad and a papa, obviously, that were alcoholics and uncles. And then I'd seen it, done it, you know. Right. But uh, no, I didn't grow up in a household with it at all. Wow. So uh, just, I guess that's probably one of the biggest regrets of my life is quitting sports because I ended up in construction and there I was yeah. and doing everything, started smoking cigarettes yep yep and then like i said i went into went into alcohol like big time Mm. and kind of try to drown out my childhood like as far as i guess not my childhood but my my early adult lifehood because i was very i was disappointed myself felt like i failed myself failed my dad failed my mom like you know they they were sending me to school the day that i got my job interview at pnl gave me a blank check go sign my do my tuition at west kentucky for machine tool yeah didn't tell them I didn't go. Went done the interview, took the job. We started out at ten eighty eight an hour. Yeah, which was you know not great living at home. My dad like he was you know obviously still supportive because you know, I was you know I had obviously a head on my shoulders and uh, worked every day, never miss. Like and still the same way now. That was incorporated you know by my papa, my dad, my uncle. Like right. always worked so. 
But like I said, it, it just went it went from a downhill spiral in alcohol from there. And uh my God and fights, uh DUIs, mm. assaults, like I had one more assault charge and that was a felony. Mm. One more DUI was a felony. So what about what age are you when this all went down? Uh, like twenty two, I think, was my first DUI. Okay. Which is when my first son when I she had him. Yeah. My first wife. Yeah. And uh So what what age did the drinking start? Uh, it probably nineteen, twenty years old. Okay. And then by twenty two. Yeah, of course I had my year. brother's ID, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and y'all look yeah, a lot alike. Yeah, so I was yeah. actually uh, less so now, but yeah, when y'all yeah, were that age, yeah. you were almost twin well, brothers. Funny story, a girl that we graduated with at the smoke shop was working there. She was twenty one at the time. Well, I wasn't I had Brian's ID and he had just left. And she, I guess, probably knew that you know the difference, but she's like, I always got y'all confused in the school. And yeah. she asked me if I, you know, I was Keith. I was like, Nah, give my ID, and it was my brother's. And of course, I'm buying beer, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it was it was definitely uh, I guess an addiction that run in the family, and I didn't realize how hard it ran in the family. Gotcha. And it it hit me hard, and I couldn't let it go. Mm-hmm. It just, of course, like I said, I tried to drown out my sorrows and losing my job and everything else, and that was that was kind of the road I chose, and it was definitely not the road that I needed to go down. Yeah, um, like I said, when my son was born, my first son, I definitely wasn't a good dad. Like I wasn't, even, I didn't even care about myself. Mm-hmm. So, um, how old is he now? He is. He's fixing to be sixteen in May. Okay, so our our oldest kids are yes. about the same age then. Yeah, because mine will be sixteen in October. Yeah. So. Uh, matter of fact, I didn't even go to the hospital because I didn't know he was born. Wow. It was locked out. Couldn't even go. It was on the basically like a do not enter list. Yeah. And uh of course that all hit pretty hard. And then when I when I did get to first see him was when the first time I ever seen him was in the courtroom. Yeah. And <clears throat> the only only trouble I'd been at this time now was my first DUI. So I mean, it's going back several years and that's back whenever they made it pretty rough on guys, you know, being able to get your kid and I had visit you know, supervised visitations. Yeah. When I did get him. I got him on Thursday night, had to have him back home that night and then he got to stay with me on the, uh, every other weekend. Yeah. So go so, back to go back to his mom. How 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 did that relationship come about? Was it just a one night stand or pretty much, yeah, we'd met in the river, riding four wheelers back, you know, it was back in, when I was running around like heavily drinking big mm-hmm. time and partying and Everybody rode Soldier Creek, Carks River here. And yeah. That's where, like, every weekend I was at, you'd find me, like, I might have to work, you know, Sunday night, I'd be there drinking. Wow. So, but, yeah, we did. We actually ended up marrying her, and well, I think we stayed married legally the whole time she was pregnant because you couldn't get divorced in the state of Kentucky. But she left after 10 days. I bought a house and the whole nine, like. So, y'all got married. Yeah. Moved in together, and yeah. 10 days later, she's gone. She's out. Yep. And because I, of you or no, yeah, no love yeah, well, there? I mean, I, well, actually, I think she went back to her ex-boyfriend at that time. But, uh, yeah, most definitely was probably due to my drinking. And what she knew that when she got with me, I mean, it's what I was doing. Yeah. So uh, it was just uh, – So you, was, so you got ride. married because she got pregnant? Yeah, most okay. definitely. You know, Bible Belt. Yeah. You know, that's what you do here. You're not the, fr- you're not the first <laughs> yeah. interviewee I've yeah. had here on this yeah. show that said the same thing, right? So, you know, we – uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I got pregnant, and people around me started asking when y'all getting married. Yep. You know? And my dad, yeah, he even sit me down. This is another, like, should have listened to your mom and dad. He was like, look, son, this is how much you make. This is how much your house that you're fixing to buy, your truck payment, your four-wheeler payment. Like, you can't live. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, we'll be fine. You know, took off anyway. Yeah, and you know I ended up, I ended up losing the house. And I'd sell the truck. I'd sell my four-wheeler. So, at all these fancy things that, you know, 19 or well, I guess at the time at 22 years old. Yeah. And went from feeling like a rock star to zero. Wow. And that really contributed to my downhill spiral. So, so you're losing all the, you're losing all the, the American dream things, right? right? right. The right. material things. And that, what did that make? That made your, uh, mental state go downhill. Is what yeah. You're and of course, you know, being, <clears throat> being who I am, I'm not going to show that. So I still was still trying to, live the lifestyle that I was, you know, I was actually living off credit card debt mm. and, uh, I could barely even afford to put gas in my truck to go to work. Right. I ended up, <clears throat> I ended up having my brother and his first wife move in with me just so I could make the house payment and stay there. And funny story there is, is my wife now, 
of we've been married for eight or see eight years this year Mm -hmm. been together 16 right and uh anyway my ex-sister-in-law and her worked together at walmart and that's how i actually met her gotcha so i guess in god's end it was it was a blessing in the time because if it wasn't for that woman i wouldn't be here yeah i can tell you that like she stuck by my side through some bad situations yeah you're um your wife, she's a pistol fire too, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She uh, she'll straighten me out in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. And she said, "I'm I'm car- I'm starting to see like a a a pattern here that you know interviewees I've had that uh, they have small wives, but they're just full of piss uh, and vinegar. She's, you know? she's wide open, <laughs> doesn't stop. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> let's continue on the story here. You get you you lost just about everything other than the yeah. house. Your brother and them's living with you." You're drinking more, big time. Yeah, of course. Uh, my, Can't afford gas, but you can yeah, afford beer. Yeah, now, I <laughs> used to competition coon hunt. Oh, okay. Okay, so actually, the first night that I met Tara, I was actually, of course, I use this as an excuse a lot because I was actually running around doing other things I shouldn't have been doing. Right. But I was always hunting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, and, conveniently you know, yeah, at yeah. night. But I would, yeah. I would, you know, be drinking and. uh Actually, if if you want to talk about the the job that I had that I lost, I actually had uh, had gotten into like an altercation and had the law called on me. She ended up getting a DUI, blew under the legal limit that night, mm. and um, I, me and another buddy ended up getting AI. And I'd been in a fight at a guy's house, mm. but he pulled a gun out, shot a gun in there, and all this stuff. So. Being me, you know, I'm going to get them all back one by one. And I shoot the windows of his house one night, intoxicated. Oh, man. And uh, obviously something I'm not proud of. Yeah. I actually go to church with a man now. Grew up with him all my life, too. Went to school with him. And uh, make, I guess it made the news that it was a drug deal gone bad. And this whole blown up case, which obviously not the case, but, yeah. you know, the media made it into whatever it was. Yeah, they're trying This to was it. Thanksgiving, so I'm in jail on Thanksgiving. Wow. Um I've got a fifty thousand dollar cash bond on my head, and I ended up missing one day of work. My papa actually came and got me out. My dad pretty much had to beg him, mm-hmm. so I didn't lose my job and ended up losing it anyway. Yeah, and this was at the railroad. Yep, I got you. That's that's how I lost that job. Mm-hmm. So what? Uh, so you shoot up, shoot the windows out of a guy's house, yeah. and what was what did the charge end up being? Oh, I got like wanting endangerment, criminal mischief, I was say, like criminal so trespassing. Seemed like, like so that would be some I bad had, stuff. I had a lot of felony charges over off the top of my head. Okay. And it was in and out of court. In and out of court until it finally like I you gotta pay restitution. So they pled everything down. They pled everything okay, down. Good. Of course, I'm not a convicted felon. I right. still carry a gun. I actually yeah. had a buddy of mine message me the other day because I'm being in his wedding. He's like, hey, I think we might do like a skeet shoot or something. He's like, can you be around firearms? And I just <laughs> laughed. I was like, yeah. Yeah, Jordan, I can, man. I was my, like, I appreciate you asking. My first guest, Lee, you know, he's the same deal. Yeah. Everybody thinks automatically yeah. thinks he's been to prison and he's a yeah. felon. He's like, I haven't done none of those yeah. things. But. But I've spent a lot of time in jail, it, but I'm not a convicted felon. Right. Of course, like I said, every – Everything from my past, like it was directly related to alcohol, mm-hmm. and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out like, hey Keith, you're getting in trouble and you're doing this and you're doing this. Like, it was always somebody else's fault. Gotcha. Always blame somebody else, and I guess that was like my mom used to do that when we were kids. You know, I, it was somebody else's fault, and uh, to protect, I guess me and my brother, especially my dad, because you know he. He'd fire you up. Yeah. He didn't play around. Yeah. Like he didn't beat us by no means, but he'd obviously punish you when you needed it. Yeah. I always thought a lot of your dad. I mean, he's yeah. a great guy. Uh, um, he is one of the best guys in the world. Yep. And uh he's kind of a he's kind of a small package kind of yeah. guy. He's not a real big yeah. guy. I mean he so uh I know he did like some bodybuilding back yeah. in the day. So he yeah, was he pretty swole up, but he just wasn't very tall or yeah. anything. Um what would you say? You're, you're talking about the alcohol and you're blaming others. Did you realize it was an addiction at the time? No, no. I, I, I was just drinking, partying, and running around with like with people I thought were friends. Yeah. What, could you go days without drinking? Or are you drinking every day? Oh, I'm drinking every day. Okay. Like if I like I said, I'm having a thirty pack of beer a day, and and then it ended up going to like thirty pack plus. We're gonna try to drink a fifth of whiskey tonight. Wow! Like or a fifth of vodka or whatever. Yeah. If we went riding four wheelers, we'd be down there from you know 
6, 7 o'clock in the morning all the way or when we got up, just mm-hmm. depending on if we drank the night before real heavy, but until 2 or 3 o'clock next morning. Wow. I mean, it was all day, all day affair, just running wild. So for people who probably don't ride four wheelers in the creek, you just ride for a little ways and then you stop, take a drink break, oh, maybe no, swim in the no, hole. You'd be driving and just wide drive open the whole time. Yeah, you might have water in your beer, but you're drinking it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, you're right. Especially when it's warm out. I mean, people splashing. I mean, it's fun. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a blast. I've done it before. I but like yeah. It. yeah, it's definitely not uh, something I would advise anybody doing, yeah. but it is fun. Yeah. Turn your four wheeler up, spend a lot of money real yeah. quick, but. Uh, yeah, I was actually actually running around not too far down the road here at a buddy's house a lot. You know, had bands over and parties, and uh, <clears throat> they're actually the reason I went to the guy's house that ended up shooting the windows out because they had jumped all of them, and they called me. Of course, you know, Keith, he'll come to the rescue. Right. I was already passed out drunk. Tara answered the phone that night, and then the next day, I started getting phone calls from the group of boys that jumped my buddies. Like, heard you was looking for us, and I'm like, yeah, I might be. Yeah. And I did, yeah. and that was definitely not the right choice. But you know, <clears throat> back back then, you always think, you know, hey, I'm Mr. Tough Guy, and you know, I'm gonna solve everything by fighting. And mm-hmm. It's definitely not the route to go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I remember you always you had a you had a temper. You know, it didn't take much to yeah. set Keith off. I remember, and I still do, but I've learned to control it a little bit. That's I mean, good. I'm still I'm still hot headed, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, as I've gotten my old age, I don't really care about fighting nobody anymore, unless unless it came to, you know, something to do with my kids or something. Then right. it might be a different story. And yeah. I'm still, I'm still gonna try to like maybe talk my way out of it yeah. before I just start throwing blows. At it somebody. hurts a lot worse now the yeah. older we get. Yeah. Yeah. I used to enjoy it. Yeah, like I didn't mind seeing blood trickle down my face, and I mean, I've been, I've had a pistol pull on me in my in my driveway, mm-hmm. and ended up getting in, hit in the head with a gun. And ended up crushing boy's eye socket and got charges pressed and the whole nine. Wow. Ended up getting out of it because it was on my property. Yeah. But yeah, I've I've had nine staples in my head where I got hit with a whiskey bottle in the head in the parking lot in Paducah. But I, you name it, I've I've been there and done it as far as, as far as alcohol goes. There was no I mean, dry like I said, I've had four DUIs, mm. which something obviously I'm not proud of, but it's something that I think a lot of people that needs to hear that because the fact is it's it's definitely uh it could have it could have went wrong several times like several times and i you know would be sitting right there yeah not not only hitting somebody you know you're taking that risk but i've told the vehicles out i flipped a, my truck like six times in over in and by the grace of god i walked away with a piece of glass stuck in my hand wow went seeing the truck the next day to actually take the wheels and tires off of it jacked it up and it was so mangled like where i was sitting at i shouldn't have been sitting in it mm. but um i've been on high speed chases with law wasn't intoxicated then i was actually driving on dui spending going to work yeah but that was something obviously i'm not proud of either went through four counties and and ended up <clears throat> serving some time over that um uh, i've been in almost every jail there is around here mm-hmm from all the way from Henderson to Graves County, Callaway, Marshall County, like, and you're talking 90 days, 60 days, 45 days, 15 days, and you get a lot of time to think. Mm-hmm. And every time you come out, it's all, you know, you're sitting in there, you know, being me and you both, I know I've grew up in the Bible Belt, <clears throat> you always like, I'm going to change. I'm going gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this, I'm going to do that. And you get out and you do good for a little while. And it was just like the devil attacked you and you're right back in the yeah, same boat get sucked right back into what yep. you're in. start hanging out with the same crowd the same people and just doing the same things and here you are mm-hmm. and one thing leads to another and of course with me with alcohol i didn't want to stop mm-hmm. it wasn't sitting down and drinking two beers like it was wide open and of course that's that's my that's how i am with anything when i dive off into it i'm going wide open yeah you're all or nothing kind yes, of yes sir I'm seeing a pattern with that too. Yeah. You know, other people that I've talked to, like, you know, yeah, I was in this trouble because when I'm in, I'm all in. You yep. Know? Uh, and I, I understand that. But you didn't have once, once that, once that first beer popped, you're not done drinking until you pass out, right? Or fall, or go to sleep, yeah, or, or went to jail, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, what would you think? One, what, what was your lowest point that you feel like? And then when when did it turn? When did you when did you turn it around? I would say at my lowest point 
was probably whenever I was still living in my house that I had that I actually I didn't lose it to the bank, end up selling it for what I owed on it mm-hmm. to somebody just to get out from under it. And uh, <clears throat> I would say that was probably my lowest point because there was times where, I mean, I'd consider taking my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I just I felt like I completely, completely failed my dad, which a lot of people don't know what my dad is like to me the biggest hero i have yeah because i've watched him like work never complain uh he's actually got his bad mr preach uh preaching association license and all i mean he's he's a great man yeah and i, I literally felt like i like failed him so that was probably i don't know it was probably my lowest point in my life when everything kind of smacked me in the face and you know like you said you talked about me being a, an all-star and sports and everything and i'd always been this and like it was all you know i was gonna be like the first kid that was in the family of of mine that had went to college and didn't go right of course got my degree now through the hall which you know that is what it is mm-hmm. it's not really anything i'll probably ever use but um it's just it just ate at me and ate at me and my pawball actually probably hit me the hardest he come up to me one day. And of course, my dad is actually the reason he quit drinking. And uh, he basically told him, you know, you're a great guy when you're when you're sober, but when you're drunk, he's like, you basically don't count. Yeah. And that's his dad? And that was his dad. Gotcha. And, of course, Paul, Paul, you know, I was, we grew up right beside each other. Yeah. In cattle farm and farming and the whole nine. So I was was doing something, cutting wood or something with Paul, Paul pretty much daily, especially when we were out in the summer. I was at their house or, you know, Doing something with him, so I looked up to him a lot, and he came up to me. You know, of course, this is after he'd already you know bailed me out, and I'd been in trouble, and been in trouble, and been in trouble. And uh, he sat down and, and told me a story about he, where he'd quit. He quit drinking, and the guy stopped in one day. He was working on his car. Of course, he owned a shop right here in Mayfield, front end line of the shop. And the guy gave him a beer, and he said, "I put it in the fridge." So I didn't touch it all day long. He said, "But I couldn't quit thinking about it." Mm. He said, as soon as, as soon as I cracked that beer open, he said, I shut my shop down, went straight to the uh, Leader Bottoms here at the liquor store, bought me a case of beer. And he said, right back to it. Yeah. And he's like, you can quit if you want to, but it's got to be on your will. Mm-hmm. He said, nobody's going to tell you when to stop. He's like, but you're going to end up going down a road you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do. And right. he's like, I've been there and done it. And of course, I, you know, I've seen my papa and my granddaddy both drunk. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen them do stuff that, Obviously, I'm sure they weren't proud of it. I you know, don't really want to go into detail on it, but uh, my granddaddy died with a beer and a camel cigarette in his hand. Yeah. Was told, hey, if you don't quit drinking, you're going to die. And um, <clears throat> I got to the point to where I actually, my, my second son was already born, and Terry and I were together, and I'd just been at it for so long. <clears throat> and one day, I, I uh, actually, long story short, my uh, – when my little girl was born is actually whenever I quit drinking, but whenever I started, I actually started going to the gym. And funny thing is you're one that commented on my post about, Hey, let's go. Yeah. And then of course, you know, we're competing against each other and everything else. But that was probably whenever I, I finally decided I was done with everything. Um, and it was, it was really an appearance look for me at the time more than anything. Cause I was tired of my gut hanging over my belt, putting right. my work boots on. Yeah. But, so you uh, you drink enough beer, regardless of your genet- your genetics, you're gonna you're gonna Big build time. a good gut. So you meet Tara. Yep. Uh, and your the rest of your children are with Tara, right? Yes, so sir. you got one with another lady, another woman, and then now you, you got you meet Tara. How how did your and Tara's relationship go? Oh, it was horrible. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first time we met each other, couldn't either one understand each other. And really? this before this was before the night she ended up being at uh, you know at my house but yeah whenever uh, we were actually at my brother and and his sisters or my uh, sister in law's apartment and we were in Murray and I had a stereo system in my truck and we we're drinking and of course there's other families and stuff in this neighborhood and of course she's already got a daughter I think Grace at the time was four yeah she was with her me and my cousin Carl were sitting in my truck with it you know and to us it wasn't turned up loud well, but I guess it was rattling the windows mm-hmm. she comes out and shuts my truck off well as soon as she walked away I was like Carl gave my spare key out of the glove box and turned it on <laughs> locked the doors and uh <laughs> I think I actually tried to kiss her that night <laughs> but, it, no it didn't go over well <laughs> Yeah, it yeah, it didn't go well at all. But yeah, uh, we ended up ended up meeting. And of course, actually, she went. 
she was sitting in my recliner when I got home one night from coon hunting in my house that I had. And uh, <clears throat> I went to the refrigerator. I told her to get up when I walked in. I actually, I told her to get out of my chair. Yeah. And uh, I went to the refrigerator and grabbed two beers out. And I come back and picked her up and set her in my lap. And I was like, if you're going to be in my chair, you're going to drink a beer with me. And ever since then, I don't know why she stayed around. But, <laughs> yeah. that's, but you know, man, which, uh, I, like I said, I've – I've definitely I've, I've cheated on her. Of course, she knows all this. I'm not gonna sit here and, and go blast myself. Right. But yeah, I've you know we've had knockdown, drag out stuff that obviously I'm not proud of. Mm-hmm. But like you said, she's feisty as can be, and yeah. she's not gonna back down. She's not. Uh, she's dumped beer on my head to throw ashtrays and bust my face open. It's everything that I've gotten. I deserved it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we've, I know we've we've split up and we've gotten back together and we've split up and got back together and for some reason like. <clears throat> She never let me go. Yeah. Like, not yep. completely. Y'all just stuck together, huh? I know uh, I have, like I said, we we grew apart after uh, high school. You know, you, you moved to Murray, yep. and I went off to the military, and I ended up coming back here eventually. But then we lived two towns apart. And now, because of social media, right. even friends that you're not really friends with, you still see yeah. each other's lives. And I, I can always remember, uh, and, and I'm proud of the man that you are now. So I don't feel bad about saying this, but I can always remember, you know, news article pop up Keith and I'd be like, dang it, man. Yep. You know, and, and because we were tight, you know, yeah. early on or, or I'd see, you know, a post from Tara, uh, you know, how big of a piece of crap you were and yep. or i'd see a picture of you and you got a, a busted lip or a black yep. eye from where y'all been at and, and the whole time i'm like dang it man yep. you know i just and wanted it was to all, it was all alcohol yeah like every bit of it um it controlled my life it really did uh if, if people don't think alcohol is like it can't do it it can it yeah. can it can really like well because it's the legal very a lot of people downplay the impact that it can have now some people can can drink and manage it yep. just fine. Like I've always been able to, it's n- it's no big deal for me to have one drink, two drinks, and then that's it. Go to bed or just have one, one drink when I eat supper, go to a right. restaurant, go to a Mexican restaurant, have one margarita, be done. You know, yep. it's, I've never had the problem, but some people just yeah. can't. I can now. Now you can. Okay. Like if we go eat and of course I don't do it very often. Most of the time I like, am in prep, but yeah. Or, you know, lifting and eating with a purpose and all that. But, um, I can I can sit down now like I could have a you know a one beer with you and I wouldn't have to it wouldn't trigger my mind and hey I got to get slammed tonight you yeah know? but that was just I guess it was the mindset I was in at the time because I hadn't forgiven myself and I wasn't happy with myself and I think that's key to life is definitely you have to you have to be happy with yourself before you can be happy with anybody else yeah. and I think that's why I failed so much in my life so let's talk about that then you <clears throat> the so the addiction of drinking was was less about the alcohol itself yeah. and more about you. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, like I said, I felt like I failed my entire life. I mean, I, in a sense, I still kind of feel like I have today, even though, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not obviously hurting or anything. But I almost feel like I'm too smart to be doing what I'm doing because gotcha. I almost feel like I, I settled because of my record. Like yeah. there's a lot of jobs I couldn't get because of my background. Yeah, I, I mean. Obviously not like because I'm a convicted felon, but they go researching your background and you got DUI after DUI after assault charge after assault charge. To, yeah, you know, and you don't realize how much effect it's got on you. And you're talking about not uh, cheap to get it all off your record. Yeah, it gets expensive. Yeah, yeah. Another friend of ours just w- is going through that right yeah. now. You know, w- uh, I-, I hopefully he'll be on here one of these days soon. But yeah, it you pay consequences you know for the actions that we have and you know we've talked about on that on here on this podcast before too is is even though you change there are still consequences to pay for the things that you've done you know um even when you come to god for forgiveness he forgives but there are still consequences even things that you have that you've done to your wife you know she may forgive, but there are consequences of trust. Right. You know, you have to turn around and rebuild trust. That's a consequence of the action that you had. So I just find it interesting though, to me that, that, that you, you now realize the alcohol was not so much. I'm addicted to the alcohol. I'm addicted to the way it makes me feel in the fact that 
it numbed you, I guess yeah. is what? Oh, yeah. I mean, I felt like it grinded it out there because I wasn't thinking about anything else. I wasn't mm-hmm. thinking about, you know, what was going on in the current time because I wasn't there. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it even led, I mean, it even led into more things. I mean, where I'm at now, like, I mean, I've, I've done pretty much everything there is as far as drug use goes, yeah. other than like heroin or having shot anything up with a needle, but pretty much tried everything there was at one point in time. And, uh, I was, I was at a, a pretty decent, you know, low in my life. And a lot of people don't even know that, uh, kind of, you know, kept it hid other than, you know, people that was around me or, you know, guys that I worked with or whatever that I was doing it with. And it was more like, you know, pills, you know, more tabs and, and stuff like that. Uh, more stuff to numb the pain. Yeah. Yeah. Downers. Yeah. You know, just trying to try to still like try, I guess, trying to escape from feeling like a failure. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's a lot of people that, that doesn't deal with that in life. And I think that's why there's, you know, a, a big suicidal rate and all that stuff. Because yeah. a lot of people, you, you're not going to go and talk about it. You're definitely you're definitely not going to sit down with somebody like we are right now and and tell them where you were at in yeah. life, especially when you're experiencing it at the time because you're trying to you're trying to hide from it. Mm-hmm. And that was me, one hundred percent. I mean, <clears throat> I think that's why I got in fights. It was what really do with it, you know? Hey, I want to go fight somebody. It was to do with because I didn't like myself, right? You know, may, you may have had the wrong shirt on the night I seen you and I was drunk. I decided I'm gonna fight you. Yeah, and that was me. And it, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't personal. Mm-hmm. It was just something I was doing at the time, just like, I guess run for myself. Yeah. So what uh, what turned it around? We talked about you know when your low moment was, and you know you've met Tara by this point. What what started the turn? The biggest turn in my life was my daughter. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. Mm-hmm. When she was born, I don't know what it was, but I I quit everything like cold turkey. Yeah. Uh, my sons, obviously, I love them, both of them dearly. But it's something about that little girl, man. She just it hooked, line, and sinkered. Yeah. Me. And How old is she it. now? She'll be nine this year. She's eight right now. She's okay. turned eight in October. But I don't know. I guess it's a blessing from God that she was born because, I mean, I did. I stopped. I stopped cold turkey drinking. Like, haven't I haven't done anything else since then. Yeah. Other other than like me and Terry goes on an anniversary day or something like that. Like I said, when we sit down, I might have a you know a glass of bourbon with a steak or something like that. But right. As far as just going and getting intoxicated, I've you, you've not know. done that since yeah. she's been born. Yep, that's good. So uh, <clears throat> I know a, a, another big thing that's kind of attributed to your turning around too. What is it that you do now that kind of helps you focus on that? I compete in bodybuilding. Compete in bodybuilding. Uh, Started out doing strong man against you. Okay, so let's let's rewind then. Yeah. Now we got uh, you, you're kind of turning going b- uh, back the right way, and uh, like I said, we were uh, friends, uh, social media friends, yeah. and I seen you. You made a post. I don't remember if it was what I don't even remember what it was, and me being the smart aleck that I yeah, was, I yeah, was like, man, I, if you want to, if you want to really lift some weights, yeah. you know, come on over here. And I started out at Quest Fitness, and that's that was the very first gym that I joined when I started back. Of course, I lifted when I was younger, and I quit because of my first DUI. Right. Um, just, but, yeah, I started I started back lifting, and uh, man, my life has completely turned around from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people that I've reached and touched and, like, <clears throat> people that's dealt with addiction mm-hmm. that has reached out to me. Hey, I'm following you. I'm watching you, and I've wanted to quit lifting. There's no telling how many times because it is time consuming. Yeah, like, it takes up a lot of my time. Prepping. I would I would say bodybuilding is probably harder to do than like uh, strength sports because of the discipline with the diet and everything. Like that's why I never went down the yeah. bodybuilding road because uh, you know I might not look as, <laughs> as good as you do sitting in these chairs. I'm still strong, right? Yeah, you know yeah. I can still bench over three plates squat over four deadlift five you know i'm still strong yeah but i i like to eat man you know so but anyway uh so i I called you out one day yeah and then next thing you know i'm gonna do i'm doing strong man for like five years yeah but yeah i started it earlier than you but i think you kept going after i quit so i had a wreck in 2016 that caused me to rupture two discs in my neck and i competed one more time after that um but it hurt so bad the the week after. I mean, when you do a strongman competition, you feel like you've been hit by a truck the next day anyways. Because yeah. for those of you that don't know, it's like 
it's world's strongest man, but just smaller. We're smaller guys. You right. know, we competed. I competed two hundred and two twenties. You know, we're we're about the same size. So we we competed two hundred pound, two twenty pounds. So we're doing all the same events, but just a little bit less weight than yeah. than those big guys are. But man, you go to a competition and you do five events, four, five, six events. You know, and you're beat up, yeah, and brutal. you're giving your all because uh, you want to win. Or I did. Yeah. I always yeah, came oh, to yeah. win. One of the things I loved about Strongman is because my diet wasn't just super strict. A lot of times I come in looking smaller than most of those guys. Yeah. And then, and I've beat several guys before and them look at me like, dang, one of, um, uh, Anthony deal, you know, you follow yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, I competed against him and almost beat him. I, I was one stone away from beating him in a competition. And then you see what he, he blew up and turned into. Yeah. So that's like that's one of those things. I'm like, I almost beat that guy one time. You know? Yeah, yeah. But we, me, you, and uh, Brian, we did a we did a competition. Paducah. I won that competition that yep. day, and I was the smallest guy in our class. That was my very first show. Yeah, yeah. I always enjoyed that because you know yeah. you get there and you start looking around like who's in my class. You know, yeah. you start comparing sizes, and then of course the events start. And you start sizing people up. Yep. And I always love because the people would look over at me and they they'd give me that like yeah i got him beat look no yeah. problem and then after that first second maybe third event they're like dang that guy's actually pretty strong <laughs> i knew you were stronger than me <laughs> so, yeah i mean i was still talking smack to you yeah. but i knew you were stronger yeah. than me by far so but, you, yeah. you do the strongman thing uh for a few years and then yeah. um what was the shift to bodybuilding i ended up injured just like you did oh, okay ended up with three herniated discs and one that was about to rupture in my thoracic spine mm -hmm. and I was actually packing my daughter. I went on a trip with Tara to California, and we were out there. She was on a business trip for her work, and I was packing her. And, and for the longest time, I hadn't told nobody, but I couldn't feel my legs. Oh, home. Man. And I just kept pushing through it, pushing through it, you know, taking ibuprofen, mm -hmm. you know, just playing it off. And I was packing her, and I actually, like, almost fell with her. And I finally reached out to a buddy of mine who actually I, I go see at Optimize You now, Shane Solomon, and his wife come chewed my butt out, made me go get MRI, MRIs done on my back. Yeah, and I was done. Mm -hmm. So, so instead of instead of stopping lifting, you just kind of refocused. Yeah, I mean, I I had to pretty much lift with like bands and bars and stuff like that until my back finally like released up enough for me to go back to lifting weight. But yeah, I did. I just kept going mm -hmm. because I knew if I didn't, where I'd end up back. Yeah, I didn't end up back on the same road. So were you were you still drinking at this time? No, or this no, is you'd already no, stopped. No, I just it. knew I knew I had to have something to replace that. Gotcha. So I and in my what little bit of dealings I've had with people who who have addictions and beat them is usually they never lose that addictive personality. They just redirect it yep. into healthier things. I can remember us we go to Florida every year vacation. I have since the boys have been little. And I can remember telling my wife now we were driving down through the main drag one day and I just got this overwhelming like taste in my mouth of alcohol mm. beer and I wanted one and I was like, I could stop at that liquor store right now and get a beer. She's like, Well stop get one. I was like, No, because I know what I know what I'll do. Mm -hmm. I knew at the time I still wasn't in the mindset to where I could have sit down and drink a beer. Where you could stop. Yeah. yeah. Like if I'd have bought a half a case of beer and I drank all of it and I had drank years, yeah. <laughs> it would have been that, ugly. Yeah, that yeah. I've been back to the same Keith that was doing stuff I didn't need to be doing. Yeah, it would have been very easy to do, and I don't think I, I don't think I could do it today. Just for the I said my mindset is completely shifted. Mm -hmm. I've actually forgave myself for all the stuff that I've done, uh, which obviously a lot of it you know I'm not happy about, but can't go back and change the past. Yeah, and I think that's what I finally had to do was just let my past go in order to be sitting where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's wise advice. We don't ever forget it, right? But we have to move on from it. You have to forgive yourself for what yep. you've done and move on. You know, there's that saying out there, those who don't study history are destined to repeat it. So we don't ever forget it as far as like it's not something we dwell on, but it's something that yeah. we, we remember is, and I, I'd never want to be that person again. That's the only reason we remember it. Cause we don't ever want to be that yep. person again. I, I, I have things, yeah. you know, that I haven't, um, shared publicly that I did, this, you know, I did similar things Right. that a lot of the difference between me and you in that time frame is you got caught and I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what happens to a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, uh, 
I just I don't, they choose the same road. Like it was my brother, for example. He's I mean he's done just as much as I have, if not worse, and and just never got. I mean he had one DUI, I think. But yeah, it was like I guess I'd go over and above. Yeah, <laughs> just you know I don't know. It was just stupidity, really. But yeah. so when did you and Tara decide to get married? When did that? When did that shift? Oh. You were together eight years before you got married. What made you decide to get married? <laughs> Uh, well, probably hurt being on my butt so much about it, but no, uh, it was time. It was yeah. time. I, I had changed as a person. And like I said, I, the whole time we were together, you know, I was doing everything that I was doing mm-hmm. and definitely wasn't happy with myself. So, uh, wasn't going to put her in a, I mean, I did put her in a position, but I wasn't, I wasn't ready to get married. Like the commitment wasn't there for me. Gotcha. It wasn't her. Mm-hmm. It was definitely me. Um, and I don't even know why she stuck. Like I said I've still repeated this, but I don't know why she stuck around. But she did. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm sure glad she did because love her to death, and I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at today without her. Yeah. Uh, she's she's definitely been my rock through a lot of times, mm-hmm. and still is. I mean, and I think that's another thing that, that you have to have too is like you got to change your you know who you're hanging around with, people, places, and things that you're doing and holding on, but. You also have to have a support system mm-hmm. when you're when you're in that situation, but uh, <clears throat> we got we got married. Let's see, Aubrey she was already born, so yeah, this will be eight years that we've been married. Um, but she says that Aubrey got me to marry. Gotcha. So that's that's her that's her reason. It, it might be. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, maybe. no, it, it was definitely time. Yeah, it was time. Um. When did, when did the cheating occur and how did she handle? Cause I, I feel like this is a subject that is important because yeah. you, I think we don't take marriage seriously enough anymore yeah. nowadays. Like you get married, you say vows, you, something happens, you cheat or heck you just don't even, you know, people, oh, I just fell out of love with them and yeah. then they just go get divorced. So we were actually married. Were you okay? We were married. I was good. That's what I was yeah. going to ask. When did that occur? I mean, obviously, it happened beforehand when we weren't married, but it did happen when we were married. Right. Um, and again, why she didn't leave me, I have no idea. Um, guess she loves me that much. I guess. Yeah. But we were, we were. She was in a new job, and I'm not sitting here making excuses for myself. And she's, she's in business. Yeah. And she was traveling, and she was just like in the computer all day long. And that's from daylight to dark. I never stopped. Mm-hmm. And had somebody reach out on social media, of course, this, you know, during my lifting and, and posting pictures and videos and everything else. And I think that's one of the things, major things wrong with this world, especially like crashes a lot of relationships. Because mm-hmm. it's very easy for somebody to reach out to you and you need to start small talk. And yeah. That's what happened. Well, you get the vanity uh and the attention people yeah. like the attention. Yeah. And that's that's what it was. It wasn't, you weren't getting attention at home, so you're getting it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to step out from there, and that's what I've done. And that's it's all one hundred percent on me. And I'm not not sitting here happy about it or boasting about it by no means. But right. still, I mean, I'm not not too big and proud to say that I've done it because yeah. it happened. Yeah. And you know, marriages are a lot of work on both parties. Um, and I'm I'm also not making excuses for you, but looking back, were there some things that you could have done? You know steps you could have taken hey tara uh you're in your computer you you know i'm still here i'm your husband i'm still here you know there are steps you could have took yeah but instead that attention comes in and then that that leads yeah and and it's not something that just happens overnight oh slow and gradual it was it was i mean over months of time like working up to it yeah but yeah it, it i mean she's been there now I guess eight years something like that now mm-hmm. and she, like i said she she's got her master's degree and what the funny story is when she started the job that she's in her boss didn't you know she had her master's oh well wow. and came to her and she's actually doing what her degree is oh. which very few people do yeah so he he finally realized that she's got her master's degree and and you know business or com communication i guess i think it's what it is yeah. but uh anyhow she's uh She's she's big time in it. She's balling. Like I'm proud of her. Yeah. And I can go back on that. Like when we first got together, 
Uh, of course, you know, I worked at P and L and lost that job. Yeah. And I worked three different jobs. I was laying floor and worked at a tire store and farmed. Yeah. And just to make ends meet while she was still going to school. Yeah. And we were living in a rundown trailer. Um, I already had both boys, Grace, and I'd had a DUI. I had to sell my truck because it was had a loan against it. Couldn't nobody drive it, and I was the only one that was on the title. Oh. So I sell my truck and I buy a fifty cc scooter. <laughs> no <laughs> joke, dude. Back and forth to work. Wow. Yeah. Yes, you. If I was, didn't even know that. Yeah, about you. Yeah, yeah, sure did. I was I was working for David and Larry Sisson farming. That was my main job, and I'd ride that little Yamaha scooter back and forth, yeah. man. Hey, you do what you got to do. do. Yeah. So, I've always uh, liked that about you, though. You've always been a guy that I'll just do whatever I got to do. Yeah. If I got to dig ditches, if I got to shovel, you it, know, yeah. cow dung, it don't I've matter what it is. I'll, I'll do it. I've done commercial roofing to to hot tar roofing to shingles. You know, you, you name it. Every nasty job there is, I've dug concrete. You know, our, our ditches out to pour concrete in with a shovel to build a sidewalk for when I was farming and yeah. welding and, you know, just the whole nine. There's nothing I haven't done. I've, I, I've done a lot of a lot of different jobs. Yeah. I hate to hurt people's feelings, but when people say I can't find a job, they need to, like, reword that. Like, yeah. I can't find a job that I want to work right. because there is always yeah. work out there. Especially if, you know, especially if you know a trade. Yeah. You know, I, I work at a chemical plant. It's no, it's no secret what I do. I'm an electrician, you know. Yeah. But if that place closed its door tomorrow, I'd have a job the next day. Right. Because I'm not afraid to work. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those deals. I don't I don't have sympathy for people that say, well, I can't find a job. Yeah. You might not be able to find the job you want. Right. But work the job that you need until you find the job that you want. That's right. I've always respected that about you because I know you've had some up and downs yeah. with jobs, but you do what you got to do. I didn't I, even know that yeah. about you, the whole scooter thing. Yeah, That's I mean, cool. I, I was actually working in a tire store on part-time, you know, I was, I was talking about it, and the guy was like, man, I got what you need, because he knew Tara was dropping me off. Right. I'd have to, you know, call her. She might be, you know, having to go get the kids somewhere, and I'd have to, you know, sit around and wait. Right. So it was 300 bucks, a little Yamaha jog, two-stroke. Man, it was a piece of crap, but I rode <laughs> it. It was purple when I bent it up, spray painted it black. You know, it was, it was, you know, it was the ego thing. It was yeah. embarrass- <laughs> already embarrassing enough riding the scooter, but it was purple. Yeah. We can ride a scooter, but we ain't ride yeah. no purple scooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, yeah, it was. That's uh, some fun memories there for me. I guess <laughs> actually it wasn't. It shouldn't be, but it is. You know, yeah. looking back on it. So, how did we kind of got off topic there? Yeah. I want to get back to the to the Tara thing. How did Tara handle um, the the adultery? How did she handle it? Well, she uh, busted me in the mouth, which well deserved. That and that uh, seems like Tara. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think maybe bust my eye open. <laughs> and like I said, it was all hall well deserved. Yeah. Threw a ring out in the yard. Of course, whenever we ended up like rekindling everything after, you know, a few weeks or whatever, <clears throat> we ended up going to counseling and worked through it and better now than we've ever been. Yeah. I mean that unfortunately that happened, but in the hindsight it made us way better as as a stronger relationship. Yeah. Big time. She didn't ever hold it over your head or anything. She did for a while. Yeah, she did for a while. And I'm, I'm seeing. I'm sure when the the anniversary date of it comes up every year, I'm sure it's under mine. Yeah. And uh, I, I try not to think about it. Obviously. Yeah. Because it's not, you know, it's in the past. And like I said, you've got to put the past behind you because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You can't dictate your future. You can't change your past. Yeah. You only live in the now. Yeah. So I, I know that's, um, that was something that me and my wife talked about you know when we when we started talking about getting married you know we had we had our first son out of wedlock you know right. like, like young dumb couples do you know and i did ask her to marry me but that wasn't why like even when yeah. we found out she was pregnant i was i i had seen enough people get married because you're pregnant and yeah. then divorce that i told her i was like i know this isn't right biblically morally whatever what we've done I said, but I'm not going to marry you just because we're having a kid together. You know? Smart. And it was like a year, maybe maybe six months later before I asked her to marry me. But, th- but it was because I loved her and I knew I yeah. would. And then we sat down and we had conversations of um, this marriage is, is for life, you know, yep. till death do us part, you know. Um, and if one of you, if one of us cheats, 
that's when death will part us. Right? That is right, always right, our joke, right. you know. <laughs> you'll I, you'll you'll see a grave. You and know? honestly, I mean, I guess I would say like if she was on other feet, like I would I would probably obviously be heartbroken, upset, mm-hmm. mad, but I don't think I would leave her either. Yeah, I don't. Um, I I know now. Me and my wife have been married. I mean, I'm not giving you advice. Go do that. No, <laughs> but, <laughs> no don't yeah, do that, yeah. Tara. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if you hear this, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, I really, I really don't think it would. I mean, we've been through enough, man. There's nothing, there's nothing we can't sit down. Eat. Like we still have arguments and stuff to this day because we're human. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing like we don't sit down and end up talking about it, working through. And I think it's where a lot of relationships fail. Yeah, Huge. communication. Like you've got to talk to each other. You can't get mad and I'm getting divorced tomorrow. Yeah, just doesn't work. And uh, I think I really think with her, well, she's a great speaker. Mm-hmm. Like. Very, very good. And sometimes it gets on my nerves yeah. because I can't argue with her because I can't win. <laughs> but And I like arguing with people. Yeah. <laughs> but no, she's a man. She's definitely, she's definitely saved my life. I will say that. Yeah. Um, of course, with her and my stepdaughter, my stepdaughter's huge, obviously, in church. And of course, we all, I am now. Like I wasn't, I, I pushed my faith away for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I guess, like I said, because I wasn't proud of myself, and I just thought, I there's no way, there's no way that like God's gonna save somebody who's done all the stuff I've done. Yeah, and uh, my wife and her both they actually got on my nerves talking about it so much. It would, they would actually make me mad. Your wife and your stepdaughter. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I've obviously not there now, but she, like she would try to give me books to read and stuff, and like Tim Tebow's books, and I was like. Psh. I reading that mm-hmm. and here I, I would say probably then the last year probably is whenever I've kind of really turned around and, and put my life back in faith in God like big time like true like well I've been saved and I know I have mm-hmm. like no doubt about it in my mind but I pushed I pushed that away just kept fighting it and fighting it fighting and God's calling on your big life big time big time and you, you were talking about lifting earlier if you if we can get back into yeah. that, um, I think that's my calling is how I've reached people. Yeah, and here recently, probably I'd say within the last six months, I wanted to quit. Like just just because I, in my mind, it takes up so much of my time. I was taken away from my family. Yeah, and I was talking about like quitting competing, being done, and still you know still lifting but not doing what I'm doing. Right, because. You know, you were talking about being like bodybuilding. You like my meals, like every day I'm scheduled, same time, same meal, same ounces, like everything. Like mm-hmm. it's got to be like. Yeah, you're prepping right now, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's everything has to be on. Like we go out to eat at a restaurant, I don't eat there. I, I pack a container in with me. Yeah. I've sit at soccer games and ball games and eat cold food. Of course, I got a thing to warm up yeah. in now, but <laughs> um, people don't realize what it takes yeah. to do it unless you've done it. And um, I don't even know where I was going with that. You're uh, calling through. Yeah. Listen. Well, anyhow, I've had, when I was thinking about that, like basically giving up on all of it, I had people reach out to me. And it was like, to me, it was like God saying, hey, I'm not done. You're not done. Mm-hmm. Come back. You're, you know, you're still, you're still doing what you're supposed to be doing, what I'm having you do to reach people, to help people. Yeah. And then I'm not saying I'm not standing up on the stage preaching, Yeah. but they're seeing what I'm doing and where I've came from. And it's, it's coming full circle with this. Very, I was telling my work partner today. It's funny that you were the person who commented on my first post of me going back to the gym. And here we are sitting here. Yeah. You can't tell me that ain't God's call. Oh, absolutely. It it's is huge. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, never my wildest dreams, but I think I'd be sitting here. I mean, obviously we're friends, but I never thought I'd be sitting here like giving my testimony. Cause I, I, you know, I'm not that person. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a public speaker. I'm not, I'm not going to, I've shared little bits and pieces of what I've done. Yeah. And I've probably never told anybody, you know, I thought about killing myself, mm-hmm. you know, but I think it, if it helps one person, then yeah. that was, it's another way of me to help people through God. You know, you talk about, I'm a, I'll share a little bit and probably by the time your episode comes out, these people may have already heard this, but uh, regardless of how it comes out, I, I want to share this. You talked about getting messages from people and it, and you feel like it's God's way of saying, Hey, keep going, keep doing this. 
So I'll try and do this without crying because it, it makes me pretty emotional. But when I was doing the the podcast, you know, I feel like I've felt for a while, a couple of three years of God's calling on my life is for men, you know, right. to reach out to men, to, to help men, step up, equip men, whatever the case may be, you know, men's ministry. And it's led me to this path, this podcast. Well, I'm I'm probably not the best personal speaker. I, I don't do the camera thing, you know, right. none of those things. You know, God doesn't usually call the equipped. He equips the called, you know. That's and true. so I was like, all right, I'm 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 all in. I'm going to do this. And if, I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So you've seen the first episode. I showed it to you already of right. me sitting at my dining room table <laughs> filming it, right? Yeah, yeah. And what people didn't see is... I filmed like four or five, you know, never could get it perfect. I'd have to clear my throat or I have this bad thing about when I go to speak, I go like right before my wife's even pointed it out. She's like, every time, sometimes you go to speak, you make that sound and it comes through on the microphone. I'm like, well, I don't know how to not do that. You know, yeah, that's yeah. just who I am. That's how I talk. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm getting frustrated. I took off work that day. It was a Monday. I was like, I got to get this podcast started because I was afraid if I didn't hurry up and get the ball rolling, I was just going to say, well, forget it. You know, yeah. it ain't working out. And so I take off work. I, I get everything set up. I don't have none of this fancy equipment. I got my smartphone and a tripod and I've got it propped up on two Bibles that I got. You know, <laughs> I got it. Might Whatever it I had to do. Yeah. And uh, I'm filmed two or three. Could never get it right. I got my notes in front of me on the laptop. You can't see it in the camera view. I'm trying to read those and look professional. And I filmed about three takes and, and I'm looking through them on my phone. And I had, for whatever reason, I think I took my phone off of airplane mode so I could just get messages. And I'm looking through these takes and I'm, I'm about to call it quits. I'm like, you freaking suck. Nobody's going to listen to you. None of that, right? And about that time, I get a text message. And it's from uh, Jameson Chalker. He's, he's the, the interview I had before you. Okay. 22-year-old kid. Uh, he's in my young adult. I teach him on Wednesday nights. And uh, we probably hadn't talked in 10 days, you yeah. know. Uh, he didn't come the week before. He didn't know anything about the podcast. Nobody really did other than like my wife and a right. few close friends. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying nobody's going to listen to you. This is stupid. You might as well just quit. These are the thoughts running through my head. Yeah. I get this text. And the text said, hey, uh, I was just thinking about you. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I just wanted to let you know that you're really the only godly man in my life. Wow. That gives, you know, that gives me guidance and influence. Yeah. And it wrecked me. I'm sure. I was like, I'm sure. Holy cow. And, you yeah. know, and so I was like, well, okay, God, yeah, I hear go. you. <laughs> you know, yeah. because he didn't know that I needed that in that moment. Right. Because I was fixing to quit. I was fixing to say, screw all this. You know, yep. I'd only by this point maybe bought a microphone or two. Right. Actually, I think somebody bought it for me. But anyway, I was like, I'm done. And in that moment, I get that text. And so the very next take, episode one that all of y'all see was yeah. the very next take. Full sin. I was like, I'm going for it. I don't care if it's screwed up. I don't care if I got to clear my throat 15 yeah. times. Well, Who cares? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. We don't care anymore. But yeah. in my mind, I had this mentality of it's got to be perfect. But I think what's attractive to people about this podcast and the ones that I like are the ones that aren't perfect, you right. know, where guys are just being real and we're just talking, we're just trying to help people, you know, <clears throat> another cool story about God providing in your calling is <clears throat> whenever, uh, I decided I was like, I, I need a camera, right? I don't, I don't need to film. I was going to film the first couple on my smartphone, but I had a specific dollar amount in my mind, I need to save up about X amount of dollars yeah. to buy. And the dollar amount I had in my head, I, I'd got on YouTube. I'm a YouTube searching oh, machine, yeah. you know. You can build anything. <laughs> yeah, <YouTube. laughs> right. Yeah. So I get on YouTube. I'm like, you know, best camera for podcast 2023. I'm looking all this stuff. Anyway, anyways, in my mind, I've about a thousand bucks is what I need to save up to get a good camera. So, yeah. and then. One night after a Bible study that I teach on Sunday night, a couple comes up to me in the dark. You know, I'm I'm trying to turn the lights out and, and lock up, and a couple comes up to me, and the and the wife hands hands something to me. It's dark. Right. Well, as soon as I grabbed it, I could tell it's money, and I was like, "What's this for?" And the husband's like, "We want to sew into your ministry." And I was like, 
the heck are you talking about? And my first instinct was no, I don't, I don't need your money, you know. Right. But then I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, no, you take it. This yeah. is me providing for you. And so I didn't count it or nothing. I just stuck it in my hoodie pocket, and you know, I cried, gave all the hugs and all that, and told him thank you. And then I got home and went to count it, and guess how much it was? Thousand, Thousand bucks. bucks. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell my wife. I yeah. had that number in my head. It's just yeah. something I just mentally checked off. This is what yeah, I need for the next step. Me, I mean, it's giving me goosebumps. Thing. You can't <laughs> tell me that. You know that that's that's God. Yeah. I mean, there's no other reason for it. Yeah. So when what I'm trying to get people to understand, and men, you know, I know we got some ladies that listen to this, but men, when when God has a calling on your life, He will provide every step of the way. Yeah. Financially emotionally, mentally, when you, when you're yeah. like, I'm, I'm done with this, yeah. you'll get that ding. Yep. Another interesting story just happened here recently with that is Terrence boss. Of course, he's very, very successful. He's owned SBG realty owned a surveying company and all this. Well, he's, he puts out, I think it was on, on Facebook that he's going to start doing these classes. I'm thinking, you know, business class, I'm going to learn something from this guy. Yeah. So I'll sign up for it. And it's a group of guys doing zoom meetings and then next thing you know he's like hey we're gonna meet up at, at my uh farm in the barn and do the do it on you know in person yeah so we go out and of course you know at, at the end of it he kind of you know give his testimony like where he where he came from and stuff like when it all first started and you got you got like a lesson book that he had done and all this stuff and it it was you know like life lessons yeah and uh so I'm still I'm still not thinking like anything about this, you know. I'm thinking I like it's business class. Right. Like eventually he's gonna get into how you know how to be successful. <laughs> right. Well, so I go out and sure enough it's not like we sit down and he ended up like it was it was like a men's group. Yeah. Like it's what it ended up being. And like at the last the very I made it of course I was working on a shutdown. Of course, you know, I work at a chemical plant myself, mm-hmm. so I'm probably working seven twelves, sixteens, like you can't ever tell. Right. And then you know, schedule meetings or something I couldn't make. And uh, of course you'd go in and catch up and all that, but the last one was actually like him basically giving testimony and then the preacher came on and all that stuff. And there was there was actually one night that, that we had went there that I was sitting in my truck and I think it was like when everything kind of hit me in reality, like, hey, like, you know, God's, God is real. Like, you need, you know, you need to get back and get your life back together and mm-hmm. stop, stop living the way you're living, stop doing what you're doing. And, you know, you have, you have that feeling that kind of overwhelms you. And I think that was probably one of like, of course, I ain't even told Tara this, but that, that night I sit in my truck, I was like sitting out in tears. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't really understand what was going on. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's that's when my like my my life probably really turned around like for the better like just overall like looking at life with a different aspect big time. So what would you say you did? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one word that I think, but what normally happens when people's lives turn around and they uh, start living for God is they surrender. Would yeah. you say that's what you did Most in that definitely. moment? Most definitely. Like I, like I said, I know. I know I've talked about like forgiving myself, but I actually like forgave myself that night. Yeah. Like quit thinking about it. Like you had, all that's gone. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's no sense of being stuck in that place in your head and your mind and still not perfect today by yeah. no means. And I still have, you know, still have stuff that that I still think it's the devil that reaches out after me on daily. Mm-hmm. And uh but, you know, there's always temptations in this world. There's always stuff that trigger your mind to, to do anything you just got to be strong enough and and even in your faith or even in yourself to say no yeah yeah they're they're in the bible paul talks about sins he talk he lists all these kind of sins in first corinthians and he talks about <clears throat> you know greed pride jealousy all these sins we got to stand firm and fight yep. everything except sexual sin we run from that right right we don't. We flee from sexual sin because yeah. we can't handle it. You know, yeah. as men, we're weak when it comes to that. Yep. But you just have to stand firm, and you have to fight, and you have to equip yourself uh, with the things necessary to be that, to yep. be that soldier, to be that person, stand up and fight. So, I know uh, Tara and your daughter Grace, right, shared yep. 
a, a lot about their faith. At what point? At what point did you say, "All right, I'm gonna start going to church with y'all"? Or how, I, what did that look like? I've always went, but I was sporadic. Okay. Like I always make an excuse, like you know, hey, I'm in prep. I gotta, you know, I'll eat my meals. Like I can't go. Yeah, I can always, I can always push my meal back. Yeah, like, but I would use it as an excuse, and you know, she always let it go. Mm-hmm. And it got, it, it kind of gets me to the point now to where I feel like I'm, if I don't, if I'm not there with my family, of course she serves. Like Terry, you know, and Grace does. She's in the youth, and like Terry, she's, you know, she ushers and everything else. Like, um. Of course, I'm not. I don't do that yet. Or of course, I do. Like when I usually leave there, I am going to eat or I'm going to the gym or whatever. Because like I said, I am competing, and right. trying to get ready for shows, and uh, that might be something that I do later on. Mm-hmm. Not, I'm not not saying I won't do that, right? But I just felt like I kind of felt like I was failing my kids by you know not only my wife, but. I'm not. I'm not setting the example for my kids that I needed to be. You're not setting that like, godly example. Yeah, and, and it's definitely something that I want to instill in my kids. And of course, my youngest son. He's he's hard headed like his daddy. He is a lot. He is pretty much a Keith and, Junior. And well, and he's got a lot of his mama in him too. So I mean, <laughs> he's he's definitely a dangerous yeah. combo there. Oh, okay, but, he got uh, he got the worst yeah, of both got, worlds. So he's he you know he doesn't like going. Yeah, he does. He goes to youth, and then of course they 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 go and all that. But he doesn't like going and listen to preaching. Yeah. And I don't like going to listen to the singing at church because I don't like the band. Yeah. And not not that they're bad by no means. Yeah, just not it's, your kind of it's music. It's just not my type because you got bright lights shining all on me and yeah. I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> I got sweat running down my back and I'm at church, you know, and then the lights, you know, come on for the preaching and I'm standing here soaked. Yeah. It's kind of embarrassing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, I, I just miss my old Southern Baptist hymns. You know, yeah. I, miss my, I miss my great aunt being up, you know, singing with a piano. You know, yeah. that's, that's my style. Mm-hmm. But anyhow, like, I used to I used to use that too as an excuse. I would come in later. Yeah, I'd come in and listen to the preaching. I'd skip music. Gotcha. Or I'd stand out. But now now I'm going. Like, yeah. um, of course, been if if work allows me to do it. But uh, there has been times where I haven't been able to go because of work. I mean, mm-hmm. there's nothing really I can do about that. But yeah, um, I definitely definitely want to set the presence for my kids that that's something that needs to be in in your life big time. Yeah, and I want to see them. I, I want to. I mean, like I said, I'm not perfect, but I definitely want to see them, like God living in me and doing doing work, and not just on that Sunday. Right. Uh, every day. Every day. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to get better at it. I mean, I'm you know, it's it's definitely something that I think takes it takes time and takes work because I've avoided it for so long. Yeah. I pushed it off. Well, so. it, it's a process. Let me explain uh, to those that may not know, but. And I actually had a guy reach out to me. It, it 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 encouraged me, but he said that I said a word on my podcast that he had never heard before. Been going to church a long time and never yeah. heard this word before. But when we when we become believers and followers of Jesus, in that moment, right, we're instantly justified. It's called justification. Yeah. Right? But then the process of us cleaning up our lives and living for Christ, living for God, is a process called sanctification. And that's a process, right? And it's it happens slow, and it happens continually until either he returns or we die. One of right. the two. We're always trying to live better lives, live more holy, and live more like Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus was perfect. We'll never we'll never achieve that, yeah. but we're always trying to get there, right? Yeah. And then eventually we reach glory or glorification when we die and go to be right. with him or he returns. So those are the occasions that the three so there's justification which we receive instantly when we become followers of christ my justification is the same as your justification and then we start a process called sanctification now that's different for everybody yeah some people you know as soon as they find jesus they're they dive deep in the church and they're serving and they go to bible school and they become preachers and some people have that path some people have your path right, right. come to know the lord be stray for a while we come back we do all these things you know, it looks different for everybody. Yeah. And then eventually we get to that glorification. So it's a process. Right. You know, and I think that's, we have to give ourselves some grace. As long as we're moving forward, that's what's important. Yep. Um, I, and I, 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 I see comparison a lot in the church yeah. and it kind of, it frustrates me, you know, I, because I see some people who have way more potential and they say, well, I'm doing more than so and so. I'm like, yeah, but you're not doing what God's called you to do. You're not you're not stepping into your calling and your potential. Stop comparing yourself to them. 
And then I see some people who are like, well, I'll never be as good as, you know, I just use my wife for an example because she's our worship leader. There's lots of people who are like, right. well, I'll never be as good as your wife. You, you are not my be. wife. She has her calling and she's stepping in that role. I don't care if your calling is to serve donuts on Sunday morning. If that's your calling, step into it proudly. How many people you think you can reach? You somebody comes Watch. in sad, give them a smile and a don't. Who's sad with a donut? Yeah. Right? I'm yeah. saying that to you because I know you're. <laughs> I like to have one right now. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You're no, pre- it's, like I said, that's uh, I, you know, I, I get back to my dad, you know, because I looked up to my dad so much, and we went to church. Yeah, I mean. But that's where it was at, you know. It, it didn't come home. Like you know, we we went to you know Sunday school and all that. We went to, um, you know, Sunday service. But when we left, you know, we go to my granny's and eat, or we did at the church. But it didn't go any further than that. And yeah. I've heard my dad say that he felt like he failed us at that point. I don't. I've failed so much and not listened to him that that's something that I'm gonna On this that point. I'm gonna listen to him because yeah. I know how important it is. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's um, that's something that's that's a plague in this Bible Belt that we live in is yep. because we live in an area where church is common and that's what you do on Sundays, but that's where it stays. You know, people don't bring church home with them. You know, the church is not the building we go to. We are the church. The body yeah. of believers is the church, and we should be the church when we come home, when we go to work, right? when we go to Walmart. Uh, when somebody cuts you off at the drive through, yeah. you know, yeah. there are all, I mean, there are all kinds of times that we should be the church. Uh, I posted a short today. Uh, this, this will probably date when we're doing this, but I don't really care. I posted a short today in mine and Lee's where we're talking about ministry. Ministry is not uh, being a preacher and preaching to, you know, we call that the ministry. Right. I'm going to join the ministry. I'm going to work in ministry. What the preacher does is he equips the body of believers for us to go out to the ministry, yeah. which is outside the walls, the lost right. outside the right. walls, you know, and we, we, we have lost that come into the church and they find the Lord and that's great, but we should be going outside the four walls. The ministry's out there. Yeah. You know, that's, I'm essentially through this podcast going outside. I know we're sitting in the church filming yeah. it, but I'm trying to get it out. Now we, we have such great opportunities. People that you probably don't even know, you encourage them through your bodybuilding and your story because of the opportunity we have of social media and YouTube and all the things. Yeah, big time. I mean, that's that, That's where I've gotten most of my me- – well, I mean, 90% of the message is where they come from. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not I, – I get some in person, but it's people that I see. Yeah. But, for, you know, for the most part, when people mess with me, it's, it's on Instagram or it's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And, like I said, it's people that's, that's kind of rolled in the same shoes I've been in. And uh, I've actually – had an opportunity, of course, I got stuck on a shutdown that I wanted to do was to go to the jail and yeah. speak there. Yeah. And it's something I still want to do. I still like, I kind of pushed it off a little bit because I've gotten so busy, you mm-hmm. know, with kids, travel sports and everything else. Yeah. But it's something I definitely want to do because it's, I think I, I think my story as far as like, because I could go a lot deeper into it than what I have here. But uh, it definitely, uh, it definitely, uh, if you see where I'm at to where I came from, and you and you rode that wave wave with me and was actually living it like it it's definitely uh you definitely wouldn't think I'd be sitting here yeah your your uh dark parts of your life I saw from afar like yeah. via social media and but because I knew you and we were friends on Facebook you know I seen it and then now I feel like we're a little bit closer when we started lifting weights yeah. together you know we we kind of grew a little bit tighter bond and you know we lived a couple of towns apart but still I can say that to see where you were and where you came from. I'm proud of you. I appreciate it. Um, while we're on the subject of your bodybuilding lifting, one of the things I kind of want to talk about just for a little bit is how important do you think it is for a man to be physically fit? Me personally, and I'm not just saying this because I lift, but because when I was a kid, my dad competed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and as you said, my dad, I mean, he's not, he's not the biggest man, but whenever he was doing that because my dad stopped one diabetic oh I didn't and, know. I, and i seen dad like in the garage on a stationary bike one of the fan bikes mm-hmm. broke it you could get on it and pedal it and the blades would fall off of it i'm talking about in the garage with the door shut and him like he should have probably died because <laughs> yeah. i mean he's you know you go out there and like dad you probably need to come in and eat like, yeah and he's pushing but 
you know, you always have like heroes, you know, as a kid growing up, you know, Michael Jordan. And of course, you know, I always looked up to those guys, but my dad probably don't even realize I looked up to him and I still do to this day because I, <clears throat> you see a man with, with muscle mass and I always like my, to me, my dad was the biggest guy on earth. Yeah. Like you go see him stand on the stage and I mean, he's in, he's in, he's still in good shape right now at 58 years old. Yeah. He's probably in better shape than most of the kids that are 18 to 25 years old. I know he is. Mm-hmm. Put him up against them still yeah. this day, but uh, I think in, in a especially in I would say in a young man's eyes, but in my like my daughter and and her eyes, mm-hmm. there ain't nobody that's better than her daddy. Yeah, nobody bigger. And of course, you know that's how my sons was when they was little, both of them. Of course, now they're both smart Alex. Yeah, know, her dad's you know not cool enough. <laughs> Whatever, for them. Dad. but yeah, uh, when I get old enough, they'll they'll definitely they'll switch back, and I know that because I've been there and, and lived all that life, but. Uh, I definitely think it's uh, it's something that every man should do, like because you shouldn't be sitting around and being lazy and overweight. And mm-hmm. You should definitely set an example for your kids, just like just like you are with God. You, I mean, in the Bible, it does say that your body's a temple. Mm-hmm. Take care of it. Right. You only got one, and I mean, you definitely shouldn't be walking around overweight and out of shape and not be able to get up, and go outside, and play with your kids or do whatever. Yeah. But I definitely think, um, not saying that you got to compete bodybuilding, right. But just taking care of yourself, you know, <clears throat> my my kids, they see how I eat. I don't force it on them. Mm-hmm. Not saying that all my kids eat like I do, but the little girl, mm-hmm. most definitely. She's just like dad? Yeah. She's she's making sure she's getting her fruit, her protein. Like, <laughs> she's she's on it. She'll be Jack. Yeah, She'll be walking probably. on Jack for a little. That's what I tell my brother all the time, so she's going to be a star of this family. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, whatever. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, you just wait. Yeah. She's got it. She's got the drive. My my thing with with men and and uh, fitness uh, is just be functionally fit. Yeah. You know, like I'm probably twenty percent body fat, but I I there's no doubt in my mind if a car fell on my kid, I could pick it up off of him. Right. You know what I mean? I just I've always been. Well, since I started tr- training strong man, you know, I went through a spell there where I was, I got pretty, f- f- pretty fat, you know, yeah. and then one day it disgusted me enough that I was like, I'm going to do something about this. So I started working out and then thanks to primal and, and TJ and those guys, yeah. you know, then I'm one of those kind of people. It's hard to just go work out. I str- I'm struggling with that right now. Of uh, right. It's hard to just go work out without a goal in mind. So yeah. we're going to the beach in October. We got a guy that's going with us. His name's Chris and he's, he walks he's like you he has that weird uh red meat allergy but he's like you every time i see him he's eating out a piece of a tupperware and he's he walks around pretty about like you look right now that's how he walks around all the time yeah and i told him i said uh chris you're not gonna be the only good looking one on the beach where's there's like six families (laughs) going and i was like i'm fixing to get so i have to have a goal you know yeah and it is hard just to go do yeah i mean it's hard you know but dang do uh you know Pick a date. I want to look good for this. Or now, there's all kinds of freaking. Dana Lynn Bailey post a, a six week challenge three times a year. I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of there's stuff apps, online. There's apps that's giving away money. Yeah, big money. You win ten thousand yeah. dollars if you. you know, if you lose I think the first form right now is doing one that's like a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's some big money. Yeah, but I mean, if if you're that type of person where you need yeah. a goal, there's your goal. Well, I mean, most people do. Like I said, most people's got to have a goal because. You know, most people's looking at a scale, yeah. not to get technical and all this. But most people's looking at a scale instead of being happy with themselves. Like yeah. If you look in the mirror and you're happy with yourself, that's all you need. Yeah. That's, that's I, use, I use the scale as a tool. Like yeah. if I'm trying yeah. to lean yeah. down, then I'll use the scale right. as a tool. But I don't really care what that number is. Yeah. If I'm, if I look good at 200, then great. If I look good at 220, then great. You know, yeah. right, I need to be closer to 200 right now, but you know, yeah. That's, yeah. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might get with you for some diet plan after <laughs> well, this. We can do it. Uh, you know, I, I, I applaud your story. I, I'm going to offer you one piece of advice. And, and you, all you're talking today, uh, I think you're on the right path. You're doing the right things. When you get done with this show, find a place in your church to serve. Yeah. Because it'll change your life too. Yeah. So, you know, don't use the meal as an excuse. I, I'm giving you the grace of this show. Get, get to the show, compete, do your thing. And when you're done with that, find somewhere to serve. Talk to whoever does the serve and yeah. say, hey, where do you need somebody? Or pray about it. Right. God, what do you have for me? What is my calling? And I, and I know we talked about 
your fitness. You want to get into the jails? Hey, look into right. that. And I but, know that's that's one thing the church does. I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. And after I got, I actually got reached out by one of the one of the officers in there who wanted me to do it. That I actually used to date. Well, used to date his, his sister actually back yeah. in I was actually probably one of my first girlfriends I had in middle school. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's actually one that reached out to me and then come to find out from Dustin, from the preacher, that the church does it. Yeah. So that might be where I serve at. Yeah. But the thing about it is most of the time people, uh, 100% of the work at church is usually done by 20% of the people. Yeah. Because we're as people, we're just naturally consumers. We want to come. We want to show up at church. What do you got for me today? You got some songs. You got a, you got a good preaching or maybe a TED Talk. You got another yeah. song, and then I'm out. We come, we consume, we leave. But you won't you will never realize how fulfilling it is until you serve somebody else. You know, and I know you know that through yeah. other things. Well, it's funny that you're sitting here saying this, and I guess maybe it's another God sent call, but I actually told my wife after I do this show that I'm done until my son graduates. Oh, okay. Not American. not lifting. Right. But I'm but done competing. competing. Yeah. And just for the simple fact that I want to be able to do more with my family, mm-hmm. like in church. Yeah. Like there's there's stuff that Keith Wallace wants to do that I think I finally reached the point in my life to where I don't have to do something that's that's driving me to keep me from, from an addiction of alcohol. Gotcha. And I and I really think that it's God that done that. Mm-hmm. Like they finally like, hey, you're at a point in your life, like, let's go. And I, and that's what I want to do. Yeah. So Yeah, I and I think that that'll be another big step. you you serving and helping others is a is a big step. It was for me in my life. So we're at about an hour and a half. Let's we'll, we'll wrap this thing up. Okay. Uh, I want you to just speak to the maybe men or anybody that's listening. If you had one piece of advice that you could that you could leave us on, what would that be for today? I would say to be authentic in yourself, to make sure that everything that you do in life is you're happy because. Mm. The biggest, the biggest regret in, that I have in my life was I did not make myself happy, and I couldn't make anybody else happy, and it 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 drowned me, mm-hmm. it it killed me. And I'm not I'm not talking about being like arrogant. I'm talking about being truly happy with yourself, no matter no matter what it is. I don't care what you're doing, and it and it has to be something that obviously is sustainable. It can't be something that's that's crazy like. You know, alcohol is not going to make you happy. Drugs are not going to make you happy. Like it can, it can be a a numerous amount of things, but make sure that you're living in the now. Mm -hmm. Like, cause like I said, you can't, you can't dictate your future. You can't, you can't change your past. So to me being happy, it will make you, make your life so much easier. Mm -hmm. Um, Just be a good person. Yeah. That's, Really, I, I guess that's my biggest advice I have to anybody. Like I said, the, and the biggest thing is just being being true to yourself, yeah. being authentic, not not trying to be somebody you're not. I like that you said that being authentic with who who you truly are. Because we get caught up in yep. if we want to run with this crowd, well, then we act like this crowd. Yep. Or you know, keeping up with the Joneses, buying things Look. that you can't afford, all those yes, things. Sir. But and that, if that's not who you really are, you'll never truly be happy. Yep. I mean. Um, how many celebrities do we know of that are truly unhappy, miserable, depressed? And to look at them, you'd think they've got everything. Yeah. Why would they not be? I mean, Robin Williams, he committed suicide. He looked like the happiest guy you ever yep. seen every time he was on camera. That's it's. I'm reading a book right now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end on this right here. Okay. One of his one of his things he does in there is this is Bradley. If anybody wants to read it, it's called. Um, um, the hard way. The hard way. Okay. And he says that in his book, he calls it. He call. I think he calls it like the million dollar. <clears throat> but he offers you a million dollars. But the kicker to it is, you can't wake up tomorrow. Mm. He said, "So how how bad is your life?" Because he's never had anybody accept it. Right. How bad it truly is your life? Because money's not going to change it or make it any better. Right. Because everything that you have was given to you for a reason. Mm-hmm. You've got to make the best with it every day. And when you wake up that next morning, that's your gift. That next breath. That next breath, that next opportunity to go make that day. Yeah, that's good. That's a good way to end right there. I appreciate you coming. I'm glad you told your story. 
Uh, probably come back maybe Most in a couple definitely. months or something. Most you know, uh, we'll talk again. Um, I got some things rolling around in the old dome up here, so yeah. I may I may have you back on. Maybe you and Tara. That would be awesome. Uh, you know, my my goal with this whole thing is to equip men to to do better than we've done right we've screwed up in certain areas right we want to equip people to not not do that and marriage is a big one and uh you guys have had a crazy marriage so uh but it's an it's a good example how can we learn from it right you know let's let's not waste it uh let's not just say man we screwed up let's use it let's help others through our that's what testimonies are for right we we tell everybody here's where i was Here's where I am now. Here's how God helped me to get where I am now. Right. Yeah. And then let's use it as a tool to help others. So I think it'd be cool to maybe have you and Tara back on. She can tell a little bit. I mean, oh, it's a man's yeah. podcast, yeah. but we can learn from That's women. We can learn from she, women. She can too. hang out with the guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's done it for she, years. You're, she's a lot like my wife, yeah, and she's probably more comfortable hanging out with <laughs> yeah. the guys. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it's tradition, man. If you don't mind, pray us out. We're going to do it. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, just want to thank you for this opportunity uh, for me and Brad to get back together. It's been a minute. Would you know? Hopefully, this testimony reaches reaches some people and maybe hopefully changes a life. I uh, just want to thank you for everything you've done in my life here recently. Uh, hopefully, you'll continue to touch more and more people, changing their lives for the better. Yes. And dear Lord, I just want to uh, thank you again for for everything that you've done. And Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Until next time, stay ready.